Alright, so welcome to Diefenbaker House. Uh, this house was built in 1912 and Diefenbaker lived here from 1947 until 1957. Uh, in 1957 he became Prime Minister, so he actually moved to Ottawa. And they did keep the house in their name, but they actually used it as a rental home until 1975 when they signed it over to the city. And we have the documentation here uh, that they signed it over to the city in the hopes that it would be made a uh, museum at some point. Uh, so since Diefenbaker never had any children of his own, uh, he left everything that he had to the University of Saskatchewan uh, because he was the chancellor there. Uh, so he left everything there. Uh, they run the Diefenbaker Centre and everything that's in this house uh, they lend to us and we keep it here on a kind of semi-permanent loan and set it up based on photographic evidence. Uh, so one of the interesting things in this room is this couch here. Uh, this couch was actually owned by John A. McDonald, uh, so it's a very old couch. Diefenbaker was a big supporter of John A. McDonald and he really liked his policies and what the first Prime Minister had done for the country. Uh, so he would often get his possessions as gifts, uh, or he would go to auction and buy them himself. On the walls we have some Canadian artwork. Uh, the large one up here, uh, that's by an Alberta artist, Duncan McKinnon Crawford. Uh, we have uh, several other examples of Canadian artwork. Uh, the Diefenbakers always like to have Canadian artwork throughout their home uh, to support Canadian arts and culture. Uh, this bookcase is something that's uh, quite old in John's life. It was uh, from his law office in downtown Prince Albert. Uh, it's one of the few things that we do have from his law office in the house here. Uh, so this dining room is the only room in the house that has this ceiling stucco uh, and the ceiling beams here. Uh, and that's an original feature of the house that kind of sets it apart from the house that uh, the rest of the house. Uh, so one of the unique things in this room uh, is this piano window up here, and that's actually called a piano window. And the piano is actually the historical societies, but we've set it there to highlight the piano window in the room. And the reason you would set your window up so high on the wall like that is so that when you put a piano underneath it, you wouldn't lose all of the light by having this big tall back covering up all of your window. On the table here, we have some uh, blue Meccano by Royal Crown Derby. Uh, China, so that's something that was a very popular China pattern and actually both of Diefenbaker's wives, his first wife Edna and his second wife Olive, they both collected that China pattern. And this is a fairly unique piece here, it's actually a cheese dish. So you would get a wheel of cheese and then it's a triangle shape so that you would be able to hold the wedge of cheese that you got. Uh, Prince Albert is actually associated with three different Prime Ministers, but only Diefenbaker was the one who actually lived here and conducted a business and uh, was an upstanding member of the community. The other two Prime Ministers that we have uh, from Prince Albert only held this seat for very amount of, amounts of time. So Wilfrid Laurier ran here in 1896, and at the time it was allowed that you could run in two different ridings. Uh, so he ran here and in his home riding in Quebec. And then when he won in both ridings, he actually just passed off this uh, seat to a different Liberal member. And he kept his Quebec riding, where he had a larger majority. And Mackenzie King, he ran here in 1926 because his uh, government actually lost the election. Or his, he lost his seat that year. Uh, and the rest of the people in his party managed to win the uh, government. So he had to find a place to run from. Uh, so the Prince Albert Member of Parliament stepped down and let him run in this riding. And as a kind of thank you to the community for letting him uh, run in this riding, when he didn't really live here, he ran here for a number of years after he was elected in 1926. Uh, so he had Prince Albert National Park expanded. Uh, so we'll just go up the stairs here to the second floor. And you can see some of the campaign posters uh, from his different political campaigns. Diefenbaker actually ran uh, for mayor at one time. He also ran in um, provincial politics, but the only venue that he actually had any support in was uh, as a federal government uh, MP. And that's a picture there of Diefenbaker and his campaign manager, Dick Spencer, and all of these large black photos that you see. Uh, those are actually from his last election campaign in 1979. 
and that was the year he died as well. So this would have been Deacon Baker's bedroom, and it's another room that has a John A. McDonald artifact in it. This bed was owned by John A. McDonald, and you can tell it's really old because it has the knobs here, and that's what you would use to tie up the ropes uh, so that your mattress would stay because we didn't, they didn't have um, box springs like we do now. And he actually had to have it lengthened when he got it because he was tall, first off, and because in the 19th century it was customary to sleep sitting up against pillows, so beds were shorter. Uh, this is a portrait of Ethan Baker's mother, Mary Banner and Ethan Baker. Uh, he was very close with his mother and she enjoyed weekly phone calls from him and letters. And she said to have had more political influence on him than either of his wives. As you can see, Deacon Baker over here, we have a mannequin dressed up in his, uh, one of his suits, his shoes, uh, his legal robes. Uh, that was something that lawyers actually wore to court, uh, so that's what he would have looked like going to court. And Deacon Baker's father was Scottish, and he was German on his father's side and Scottish on his mother's side. Uh, so he liked to play up the Scottish heritage that he had because it was... Uh, not a good thing to be German during the two world wars, and he lived through both of them. Uh, so he really liked to support his Scottish heritage, and he would often be seen wearing his kilt in his town. So we'll go through here. This little section uh, commemorates that Deacon Baker was a homesteader to Saskatchewan. Uh, he actually came out here on the train with his family, and they set up a a homestead in Borden, which is just uh, northwest of Saskatoon, uh, between North Battleford and Saskatoon. Uh, he lived there for a time. His father and his uncle constructed a homestead, and these are some of the tools that they would have used uh, to construct the homestead. And if you go out to Borden, the homestead's not there anymore. It's actually been moved. There's just this little cairn uh, that says that this was the Diefenbaker homestead location, and the uh, homestead is actually now in the Pioneer Village of Moose Jaw. So this room uh, would have been a second bedroom uh, that was used by either Oliver or Edna, but because we don't have very many of their things in the, in the Diefenbaker estate, uh, we use it as a fishing room uh, because Diefenbaker was uh, an avid fisherman and outdoorsman and he liked to spend his free time doing things like that. Uh, so this is a large fish uh, that was not caught by Diefenbaker, but everyone asks if it was. Uh, it was just the largest fish caught in that constituency that year. Uh, so it has a little joke on the bottom. It says, fish below this weight are not keepers in the Prince Albert constituency in northern Saskatchewan. Uh, which is obviously not true. Uh, this is a friendship staff that Deacon Baker received from the Boy Scouts. Uh, he was very supportive of the Boy Scouts and beavers and any kind of activity that would have gotten kids out into the wilderness, learning to hunt and fish and things like that, and teaching leadership and responsibility. Uh, so he was a big supporter of that, and this was given to him in 1960 at a Boy Scouts uh, jamboree that he went to in Montana. And that fish above the closet is one that Diefenbaker actually did catch himself. And he had that stuff to mount it. In uh, this room, we have a video that we sometimes play, uh, and it also was just used as a spare bedroom uh, that would be used when Diefenbaker's uh, stepdaughter came to visit. Uh, his second wife, Olive, had a daughter from a previous marriage, uh, Carolyn Weir, and she would come and stay here, and any other guests that they had would stay in that room. It has a nice view looking northward. Uh, this would have been the only bathroom that was in the house when they were living here. Um, and it's of course been renovated a couple of times since they didn't have tenants living in this house until 1975. And this little room uh, was never actually used as an office. It was mostly a storage room because it's very small. Uh, but when his first wife Edna needed a live-in nurse, uh, she died of leukemia in 1951. And towards the end of her life she needed full-time care. So they had the live-in nurse stay in here uh, so that she could care for Edna. Uh, but we have it set up to show uh, kind of Stephen Baker's campaigning office and to show his legal career. Uh, we have some stuff from the House of Commons in it, and we have uh, different tokens that would have been in his office. This is a little alcove that just uh, would have been used as a coat closet when Stephen Baker was living here. 
uh, but we use it to show uh, that Diefenbaker was always known as the man from Prince Albert. Uh, so this one is pretty telling of how loved Diefenbaker was in the community. Uh, in 1979, he was too ill to travel to the Canada Day celebrations. Uh, so everyone who was there, which was over a thousand people, uh, they all signed this scroll and then they sent it off to Ottawa to show that he had been missed and to wish him well. Uh, let's come over here. Uh, we have some different pictures down the hall here uh, that people like to look at um, from Diefenbaker's um, younger years and getting progressively older. And then what we're in right now would have originally been the kitchen, but we had to take it out and put it in this bathroom and closet, uh, according to city bylaw. So we did that, and uh, we now use this as just a kind of walkway. Uh, this is where you get into things that need to be fixed in the house. Uh, this is a little breakfast, or would have been a breakfast nook. And then uh, the room that we're going into now is an add-on to the house and as you come in here you can feel that it's slanted uh, quite a bit and you can see it a little bit better from the outside uh, but there's a large crack running down the wall here and it goes all the way up uh, there's a big crack in the uh, ceiling upstairs um, this roof needs to be completely redone all of the shingles on the house need to be redone uh, that board right there leaks when it rains uh, you can see the water damage that's happened there. And there's also some water damage in the living room on the wall. Uh, so this is the crux of what needs to be done. This room needs to be fixed so that it's uh, stable because it's the whole house is set into a hill. So as the hill settles and the ground starts to move, the house moves with it. 